Okay, so these guys, well, you know what though? Oh yeah, it should record this from the Zoom. Oh, that one is, that one is, okay, perfect. Okay, perfect. Okay, we're done. Well, no, it's recording on Zoom. Uh, well, for the speaker, we were like, are you going to speak at all? Or is it oh, for the introduction? Yeah. Oh, okay. I'm going to introduce. Oh, it doesn't matter. She can, we can keep it up there. to see me on the camera. I'm not the important one. It's Andrew, Andrew, it's Andrew are you the only one speaking on this track? Yeah. Okay. Then, um, it's up to you. It's up. It doesn't matter. You can turn it off. Or... This is Paula Cattrall. I'm going to introduce you. Frozen. Frozen. Nope. nope. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Are we're good? Yeah. Okay. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Perfect. Um, are you seeing me here? Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. Okay, perfect. The magician ran really late, so people are roaming around. So, so, thank you for your patience. That's all right. It must have been enormously entertaining. <laughs> <laughs> or everyone went late because it was after lunch. So. <laughs> oh, I'm sure. Yeah. They're probably like, it's not happening. <laughs> uh, or everyone would have found, you know, a little place to siesta or something. <laughs> but hang on just a second. <laughs> All right, so let's just go ahead and get started. Okay, Andrea, we're going to go ahead and get started here. Okay. All right, so I'm Paula Patral. I'm a senior director with the advisory services practice at Pivot Point Consulting. If you don't know what Pivot Point is, uh, it is an IT consulting firm and staffing firm that specializes in healthcare only. That's what we do. We love healthcare IT. Uh, let's see, I am here, I have the, the privilege to present uh, Andrea Level, who is a senior director of the Revenue Integrity uh, Department of Banner Health. Um, Andrea has been uh, 
working in ops leadership, in strategy, and in execution of large transformational projects. And with that, I pass the talk to Andrea. Over to you. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, sorry for that delay. Uh, it looks like we had a little magic in the, uh, uh, the internet today. So uh, good afternoon. Uh, and uh, as I stated, I'm the Senior Director of Revenue Integrity at Banner. I've been with the company a little over three years and have been in revenue cycle for over 20 years. I'm so glad that you're able to join me for our discussion uh, on the roadmap for change in the middle revenue cycle. I know this is the last track session of the day uh, and also uh, right in between your snack and the closing uh, statement. So um, I hope uh, that you uh, will find this uh, presentation interesting uh, and we'll be able to take away some of the roadmap suggestions uh, to make changes in your middle revenue cycle. Whoops, a little fast on the trigger there. Um, we'll start off uh, by defining revenue integrity. We'll move into um, looking at um, having assessments performed on the health of your revenue integrity department. Um, and that will include looking at people, process, and technology. And we'll close with looking at safety net options to ensure you are compliantly collecting uh, the revenue for the services that you perform. I'm gonna reference Banner for some of the changes we've implemented. So I did wanna provide a little bit of context uh, to the size of Banner to correlate to the numbers uh, that we'll be providing in the slides. Currently Banner operates in uh, six uh, different states. We uh, employ a little over 52,000 team members. Our uh, annual net revenue is around 9.4 billion. Um, we provide about 839 million in community benefits uh, with services in the insurance division, uh, ambulatory care, acute care, post-acute care, and um, our distributed ambulatory footprint services. So let's start off by defining uh, revenue integrity. I took this definition from Fessler because it really resonates uh, with me what revenue integrity and what revenue integrity departments um, should be. So revenue integrity um, are the activities uh, that benefit the patient, the facility, and the payers. RI is a proactive approach that links together revenue cycle operations, clinical operations, and compliance. Uh, the RI activities ensure that clean, complete claims go out the door and that revenue capture is correct, compliant, and that the facilities keep the revenue they receive. So how do you know that you're compliantly capturing all the revenue for the services that you provide, right? So assessing the health of your revenue integrity department provides you with that information on what is working well and where your opportunities uh, for improvement are. You can utilize a vendor to perform those assessments. You can perform um, those assessments uh, internally or a combination um, of both. Uh, the advantages to using that vendor um, assessment is that they have the ability to utilize software to analyze your claims data uh, for potential uh, charge capture, coding, and documentation opportunities. Um, they have a team of subject matter experts that not only work with your RI team, but your individual departments uh, to provide a workflow analysis and identify process gaps uh, in your charge capture, uh, coding, and documentation so that you can um, implement the changes uh, based on those findings. If we look at uh, an internal assessment, um, you can um, obviously tailor that to uh, your organization and your needs. Um, I always recommend uh, reviewing your service line growth areas first. You want to make sure that you are, um, your charges are going out, um, your coding, um, all your interfaces that, you know, you want to make sure all of that is, um, you have, that's tight knit. You don't have any issues in, you know, documentation or your, your charging. You'll want to look at your denial data. Look at your recurring, um, deni your recurring avoidable denial data that are related to uh, coding and charging, um, as well as looking at your um, internal charge reconciliation policies. You know, making sure a that you have standard charge reconciliation policies, and then who's performing them and at what frequency. Because the idea there is you really want to be able to um, identify any um, charge. Uh, 
issues um, proactively. And then lastly, you know, uh, taking a look at your um, manual and your automated um, charge capture, you know, looking at your manual as to, you know, why is it, uh, why is it manual? Maybe at the time um, your EHR system didn't have, um, didn't have the capability to have charges in that particular department automated. They didn't have a, a module that fit. Um, or, you know, it's a new department that came on and we just never brought them up to um, automation. And then also looking at your automated workflows, look at your areas where you have um, a high volume of late charges or denials. You know, can you make uh, processes in that EHR workflow to make the um, capture of that uh, documentation uh, more efficient? Or is it simply just a charge capture education that's needed? So when I started at Banner um, a little over three years ago, um, they were just starting their revenue cycle uh, modernization journey. And uh, the revenue integrity department um, consisted of a, a CDM team, and that team's responsible for um, the acute and the ambulatory charge masters, as well as they had uh, acute charge error correction and manual uh, charge capture teams. The charge error correction team mainly focused, uh, they focused on um, billing edits and uh, pre-bill queries. And our manual charge capture teams um, are capture um, those review um, our clinical documentation uh, to manually charge for those departments who are currently not um, an, on an automated process. And Banner chose to uh, use vendor and internal assessments. So with the results of those assessments, we quickly realized um, that we needed a acute charge capture uh, safety net tool, which we have now put into place, uh, as well as um, a regulatory research department. This team looks at all uh, middle, revenue middle revenue cycle uh, regulatory changes, and um, they provide updates to all the leaders so that we can make um, changes to make sure we're in compliance with regulations. And I really can't um, even begin to state how wonderful this team has been, especially during COVID, um, back um, in the height when, you know, it seemed like every single day there was a new regulation uh, for coding or billing, and they really helped us stay on top of those changes and making sure we were um, implementing the right processes uh, to capture um, the, our revenue appropriately. And then finally, we were lacking an ambulatory revenue integrity uh, department to audit for missing charges, and we've also uh, put that in place. And currently, um, we are um, looking um, to finalize um, rounding out our gaps in our assessment, and um, we are implementing a centralized quality assurance and education team for our department. Uh, currently, departments, um, if they have charge capture questions, um, typically will go uh, to, you know, whoever helped them last, you know, it's, it's not a, a centralized uh, department. And we want to make sure that we uh, provide a clinician uh, and revenue integrity feedback loop to provide consistent uh, charging guidance to our department. Um, another gap um, that we are currently looking to fill is our acute revenue recovery uh, identification and management area. This is really a collaborative effort between our ambulatory revenue integrity team and our ambulatory coding team. We have many contracted providers that we bill for um, that don't always get set up correctly in the system. Um, we also have um, lots of clinics that have used di um, diagnostic tools um, and they may not um, interface uh, into our um, current system, uh, as well as we have a lot of physicians that perform outside services, um, as an example, at ASCs. And that also doesn't necessarily, those charges interface uh, back into our system. So this team is really, um, we have set this team up to help us um, quickly identify those areas where we're missing charges and get um, those encounters created over in get those encounters created so that our ambulatory uh, coding team um, can get those uh, encounters coded as well as to support this team. Um, we also um, are implementing um, an ambulatory charge capture uh, audit tool and that will uh, be implemented in the first quarter of 22 to help them more efficiently um, and 
proactively identify um, those areas of missing charges. Uh, and lastly, uh, the last gap we're looking to close is we've created um, an RI uh, pricing team. Um, and this team will be responsible for standardi standardizing our prices um, according to our strategic initiatives um, and also in making sure that we're com in compliance with all the pricing uh, transparency requirements. And in order to close uh, the gaps identified by your assessment, uh, your revenue recovery efforts and your safety net optim optimization uh, will require people, process, and technology to compliantly uh, capture that revenue for the services that you perform. Uh, we will discuss each of these in further detail uh, on the next few slides. So we'll first take a look at people. So make sure to leverage your opportunity assessment and redesign your middle revenue cycle to support your uh, assessment um, opportunities. And making sure that you really have the appropriate spans and layers uh, and provide career growth opportunities uh, for those teams. And then, um, you know, lastly, um, you know, you may not have the skill set within your organization or actually the ability to. Um, depending on where you're located, maybe you're having trouble attra attracting the right talent to fill your gaps. You know, look for vendors who have that skill set, and uh, depending on your negotiation skills, can sometimes be more cost effective than actually staffing internally. Uh, in our infrastructure, uh, we did add, uh, as I stated, we added our ambulatory uh, revenue integrity team, our uh, regulatory research and quality team, and our pricing team. We did uh, add an additional uh, 14 uh, FTEs. We um, are expecting to offset the expense of these new employees uh, with the new revenue capture uh, that we will um, see with our ambulatory charge capture audit, our revenue, revenue recovery team, and our acute uh, clinical charge capture with um, an expected ROI of 2.6. Uh, and the other added benefit of this restructure is, is um, the compliance support that this structure provides. It is also so important as you're doing this restructure, uh, restructuring your department to really invest in your team. You know, make sure that you have a, a clear definition of your team's roles and responsibilities. Um, and making sure that we're providing, you know, educational opportunities, whether that be with corporate memberships uh, to their professional organizations. It's really a great way for them to stay on top of what's trending in your area, networking, and all the op educational uh, opportunities um, that those organizations um, can provide to your team members, as well as outside, um, you know, education um, and also providing um, some internal education for your team members. It's also really important um, to make sure you're doing those performance evaluations at least, you know, semi-annually to make sure you're letting the team members know what they're doing well, and then um, providing opportunities to improve their skill sets that uh, need further development, as well as knowing those team members uh, who want to advance, you know, and guiding them to reach their goals and providing those stretch import those stretch assignments. This is so important and, uh, you know, I don't know how many, of, how many of you out there have a stretch assignment or you have managers or supervisors that have stretch assignments and we're just so, um, we always feel like we're too overwhelmed and we, we're not delegating uh, probably some of these assignments as we should be because A, we feel like we don't have the time or we don't feel like um, our team members could do it, um, but really, you know, Somebody took a chance on us at one time. So we really need to kind of pay that forward. Your, your team are smart. Um, we need to take that time uh, and prov provide them guidance on what the um, assignment is. And I think we'll be surprised at, at how much it will uh, relieve our work-life balance uh, that we're having. Um, we're helping our team members grow as well as, you know, we're not working at 10 o'clock at night or on the weekends to complete those assignments that we thought we would be able to quickly just be able to, to, to finish, but then, you know, three other major priorities came through. 
Uh, the last uh, thing I is, is cross-training. That really provides an opportunity for team members to see not only what they're doing in their space, but um, really what um, other areas are doing and you know how um, all, the, all of the different uh, revenue cycles really do affect one another. We used cross-training a lot in um, our teams, especially uh, during COVID, um, when you know we had you know team members out themselves or they were staying uh, at home um, caring for um, for their loved ones that that were sick. Um, they where they realized that um, the team that they were actually covering for was a team that they really enjoyed, and as opportunities you know arose, they um, took um, applied for those jobs and moved into those roles. So. It's a really good way, you know, to, um, you know, for those quick short-term fixes and also provides, you know, opportunities for uh, team members to see um, opportunities. We'll move into process next. Um, evaluate and standardize your uh, training materials and making sure they're um, um, always up to date and in a shared location. I don't know how many of you have, uh, you know, 15 or plus uh, your team members who can, you know, pull out a document from 10 years ago that probably doesn't really have the most updated uh, and relevant information on it anymore. Uh, make sure those are, uh, you know, stored in your um, archive files and making sure that everybody has the most up to date, not only for your teams, but any of those departments that you do provide charging guidance to. Um, I know there's a lot of turnover um, in, you know, departments, and so you want to make sure that they're always using the, the most recent. Make sure you have a, a solid onboarding plan for your team members and making sure that you're providing those skills assessment um, at 30, 60, uh, and 90 days, as well as, um, again, the ongoing educational opportunities. Charge automation. Uh, again, look at those uh, manual charge er um, areas and collaborate with your EHR, your IT, and your ancillary uh, departments for possible solutions. It's more than likely uh, at the time um, there wasn't a solution, but there probably is now. And um, if you uh, work with your teams, you can probably um, figure out a solution to automate those. As well as uh, looking at your the processes, uh, those repetitive processes that you do within your teams, you know, don't be uh, afraid of um, RPAs and using bots. Um, I know we use uh, several in our middle revenue cycle. Uh, it not only um, is more efficient, it provides the team more time uh, for those higher level tasks that require decision making um, and allows them um, to you know, develop um, new skill sets as well um, as they're not continuously doing part of their day, those repetitive tax tasks have now been eliminated. Um, surgical high dollar implants is, is a typical area where you will find uh, gaps in your revenue uh, recovery process. And we have experienced that um, at Banner as well. And it really is a multidisciplinary uh, approach um, to make sure, to ensure you're capturing that all that revenue. Um, make sure you're collaborating with your supply team to identify those high cost implants uh, and working with your EHR, EHR support team to ensure your charges are built and your in, and the interface to your patient accounting system, whether that be through documentation or scanning systems. Work with your analytics team to develop um, dashboard reports so that you're able to quickly um, identify those missing um, implant charges um, and then as well, determine who's going to work that. Um, it will be the department, RI, or, or somebody else to make sure that those are worked um, daily so you can timely get those charges, those implant charges on your accounts uh, prior to, to billing to avoid all that rework. Looking at your pre-bill queries, making sure that you, um, you develop pre-bill queries um, for your high volume NCCI and, and billing edits. Um, anything that we can get done um, up front and have that claim um, move out the door is a much more efficient process. Also, utilizing your charge capture audit tool and, and identifying those recurring issues that you could move to pre-bill or uh, develop um, education, uh, depending on the, what the root cause of that reoccurring issue is. And lastly, look at your EHR capabilities uh, to automate some of these uh, edit rules if it can be done. Uh, within your EHR system, so that those claims um, go out the go out the door cleanly the first time. 
um, let's look at technology. Integrative reference materials um, within your claims collection and charge capture audit tool allow for quick access to reach research. This is really great for, for the teams to have this in one central location in the tool that they're working in instead of you know, having the claims open, opening up another application or going to find, a, a, you know, digging up the reference book, um, opening up applications to, to find, um, you know, the information, um, the integrative reference materials contain your, um, I, your ICD-10 codes, your CPT, they can have your NCDs and LCDs all in one reference source so they don't have to look in multiple places and it just really makes their workflow much more efficient when they can research and perform their work all in one tool. Um, charge audit software um, can help um, identify your missing charges uh, and any issues uh, in your coding, whether um, missing codes or um, incorrect coding and also looking at uh, documentation issues. The use of um, RI um, analytic dashboards can help you quickly identify potential issues uh, in your revenue that need further research. And then finally, uh, vendor auditors uh, can be utilized uh, to help uh, perform com either complete chart audits or targeted department audits to ensure the orders, the charges, and uh, the documentation are all accurate. Your charge audit software can improve your gross revenue uh, by identifying uh, your missing charges um, and coding errors and also documentation and also um, potential interface errors. Your net revenue can improve by optimizing your edits, so customizing your edits to your facility um, and also prioritizing your um, edit workflow by net revenue. If your um, contract um, detail um, is not in your um, charge audit software, they typically will use um, Medicare reimbursement. So at least you can um, prioritize your edits um, by net revenue. And then also the compliance aspect that the charge uh, capture software um, will provide is you know, improving your documentation uh, and your coding. Lastly, uh, we're gonna look at uh, safety nets. So, Two to three percent of your net patient revenue can be underpaid. Uh, your bureau balance vendor partners um, should provide transparency in the issues that they're finding. They um, have contract um, subject matter experts and contract interpretation to uh, write your appeals, and also um, contract modeling experts that can help you um, make sure that you're, um, you know, making tweaks in your own contract modeling system to make sure that. Um, that you're um, more accurately modeling uh, that data. It really should be a collaborative approach with them working with you to, um, you know, letting you know what the issues are and um, working with you to help um, root cause and uh, put solutions in place. Typically on average, you know, hospitals can re recover between five and 10 million by addressing these issues uh, identified by their uh, zero balance vendor partners. Uh, safety net ROI. So even at a four to one or a five to one, it you know it does come at a high price. But I guess it goes back to that saying: you have to spend money to make money. And I think in this example here, your cost to collect does go up 57%, um, but your revenue yield goes up um, 20%. So if you look there, it's um, you're looking to collect $100 uh, worth of net revenue. Um, the national average uh, to collect. Uh, that revenue is $4.50. Your safety net tool identifies an additional $20 uh, in net benefit with um, an additional cost of $4. You still end up uh, $11.50 ahead in your net benefit. So in reality, in most cases, uh, it's worth putting in that contingency safety net um, spend uh, as long as your ROI is greater than one. Um, and utilizing your safety net to correct errors is not a long-term solution. Uh, as you can see here, your, your safety net tool identifies it, you recover it, you know, you, the expense of the claim and the, or excuse me, the expense of the safety net tool, and then your initial claims continue to have errors. 
So if you never do anything to fix your errors, you will be in this continuous cycle. So do not think of your safety net as an ongoing cycle. It is your responsibility to implement process improvement, uh, education, uh, implement interfaces or EHR, mod EHR modifications uh, to improve the workflow so that um, your departments can more efficiently uh, capture that revenue uh, compliantly for you. Um, and they should be finding new issues every month. It shouldn't be the same thing month after month um, if you put your um, processes in place. So the safety nets um, are extremely important uh, layer of redundancy, but they cannot be used as a crutch. And that takes me to the end of my presentation. Um, hopefully I didn't go too, too fast. I know we started uh, pretty late, so. I wanted to get through. Thanks, Andrea, very much for your presentation. Um, I might have a couple questions. I actually have one. Okay. <laughs> I'm wondering when you started the program, um, or, or if you didn't start it, if you came into it, how you decided to right size the team? I mean, what was it a gradual thing where you demonstrated ROI and then were able to kind of move the team and, and grow it? and get the training and the other investments that you needed? How did that kind of shape up over time? Yes, uh, so we, you know, again, we did use our assessments and looking at, you know, both internal um, and with our vendors looking at our areas. Um, again, we started out, uh, especially our revenue integrity, our ambulatory revenue integrity department, it did not exist. Uh, and we did start out um, small. Um, and so they are a, they manually review um, those now. And as that team started, you know, it's basically the ROI that they're providing us, it, it helped us to um, move forward to this re revenue recovery team that we're um, moving forward to implement now, basically, you know, starting off um, small and um, making the changes, looking at the net improvement that they're making, um, providing that case for that ROI if we had, you know, X amount um, additional team members um, and, you know, a safety net tool, we're expected to, to um, you know, get X amount of net reimbursement. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Okay, so demonstrated performance is really key. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. thanks for that. Um, are there any other questions? Yes, Andrew, it's, uh, Mr. Shannon, how are you? Good. I somebody might have to reinterpret the question. I I know someone's speaking, but I didn't really understand. Certainly. So it's Chris McShane. I got a quick question for you. What are some of the struggles you see moving forward for the revenue integrity uh, process within a, a large health system like yourselves? Uh, one of the struggles uh, is um, you know. Uh, is you know that we're large and and getting that communication out um, and standardizing you know our processes and our education um, to all the different departments and and physicians. Um, so that's why we are um, implementing um, our quality and education teams as well as that that revenue recovery team um, and getting um, that information out and. Um, making sure that um, we have our processes in place to um, follow up um, and making sure that people are using the most updated uh, processes and um, education um, and just following up on those quality audits, you know, keeping a, a better, um, you know, measure on our, our quality audits and really um, improving our collaboration with um, not only our facility departments, but um, our physicians. Definitely, it's a, it'll have to be a collaborative effort to make it work. Very good. One, one other kind of question. What are some of the key KPIs that you track um, within revenue integrity to determine if the process or procedure is working? I guess the transformation is in place. Uh, yes. So um, we track um, the amount of um, net revenue um, that we um, are seeing through um, our charge capture safety net tools. Um, we uh, track and trend um, our late charges on the um, acute side. On our ambulatory side, um, we are tracking our um, the net benefit to our missing charge audit. 
um, as well as, you know, as a percent of, of net revenue to um, show, demonstrate that those teams. Very good. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? All right. Well, thank you, everyone, for attending today. And thank you, um, Andrea, very much for your presentation. I know I learned quite a few things in the RLI aspect of this that I didn't understand. So that was that was great information. So thank you for your time. Great. Thank you. Apologize. It was a little delayed. <laughs> no worries. Bye, everyone. Bye.